Yet, across the gulf of space, intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic regarded our planet with envious eyes and slowly and surely drew their plans against us. When you have something like this as a movie premise, you know for a fact that you will be offered nothing less than a grandiose spectacle. Steven Spielberg's 2005 War of the Worlds is precisely that and, in all probability, one of the best adaptations of H.G. Wells' 1898 science fiction novel The War of the Worlds. Boasting a screenplay by Josh Friedman and David Cope, the movie's highlight categorically happens to be the menacingly massive tripod war machines capable of shrinking us humans to nothing but mere insignificance. Well, this brings us to today's video, where we'll be exploring the anatomy of the towering tripods. It will be an interesting, in-depth analysis of these vast metal machines, and we suggest you stay tuned till the end of this video to learn everything about them. Are you ready? Let's do this. But before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you enjoy our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. What is the tripod in War of the Worlds? What does it look like? There have been quite a few adaptations of Wells' story, which points towards an elementary fact that, with every adaptation over the years, the origins and general nature of the aliens have changed shape. However, if we are to look at things story-wise, they tend to maintain a relatively similar pattern. We have tripods buried underneath, aliens sneakily invading the planet to pilot the machines, followed by the tripods causing unthinkable destruction. The military, unable to defeat the tripods, and then eventually, the tripods succumbing to the disease-carrying bacteria prevalent in Earth. But having said so, the most impressive of all happens to be Spielberg's 2005 flick, where we actually get to see the brutality of the aliens after they crawl out of the Earth's grounds in their gigantic tripod war machines to exterminate the human race and wreak astronomical havoc all over the planet. In the movie, it is primarily via Morgan Freeman's narration. At this, the visual context, as well as through dialogues on display that we learn of the tripods having been placed and buried on Earth eons ago. The invasions usually begin after a series of freakish lightning storms of catastrophic proportions keep hitting the same spot repeatedly all over over the globe. While we don't realize the gravity of the situation then, it is later revealed to us that the repetitive lightning striking at the same spot is more like some form of strategy that the aliens use to transport themselves through capsules into the buried tripod war machines. It also further states that the tripods cannot function independently and need someone to pilot them. Now, as we look into these fighting machines, we realize that they are enormous tripods with an unspecified number of long, flexible, metallic tentacles which they use to grasp and abduct people primarily. The tripods are armed with invisible protective force shields that make them impervious to humanity's counterattacks. Besides the force shield, the tripods are equipped with two heat ray-like weapons with beams so powerful that they can disintegrate humans into ashes, leaving behind just their clothes. Each tripod also comprises a large head that serves more like a cockpit to the aliens. The head can turn in any direction and is more like an ocular window to be honest. Speaking of the body, the tripods have these jet-like things for discharging that can fire pressurized steams to eject black smoke. Now while it is true that the whole concept of this chemical weapon is missing from Spielberg's movie, we'd like to touch upon the concept here. You see, the black smoke is exceedingly dangerous as it can kill any organic creature that has either inhaled it or got covered in it for that matter. How tall are the tripods in the War of the Worlds? It is hard to describe the height of this menacing tripod here, one that is taller than literally everything else on display. While it is true that the size of these fast-moving three-legged fighting machines continues to remain imprecise, a newspaper clip once described them to be more than a hundred feet tall, which roughly comes to 30 meters. But if one is to look at the tripods in Jeff Wayne's musical version, there have been some significant inconsistencies in terms of the height. In fact, one of the tripods is reported to have appeared above Big Ben in the musical, so this naturally makes the machines at least three times higher than their reported size. How do their tentacles work? The tripods own multiple whip-like tentacles, which hang underneath their central bodies, each serving a different purpose. For instance, we have one of the tentacles reaching down to grasp and capture a victim, who is then placed inside an underslung cage 
Situated on the exterior side of the top of the head-like structure, we have another tentacle that is basically a blood-draining pipe and can also be used to pierce through a human's body and suck him dry. Putting stress on another one, it is also seen employed as a snake-like probe, consisting of a highly extendable tentacle with a camera attached to it. This one is used to explore smaller, constricted areas, places that are hard to reach for the tripod itself, so that post the inspection, the aliens can leave the tripods and explore the whole area on their feet. How does their heat ray work? The tripods, as seen in the 2005 War of the Worlds movie, are armed with two heat ray weapons capable of torching humans to ash and then leaving their tires behind. So what these weapons exude are basically high energy emissions of microwaves that cause the human body to turn into superheated steam and, in turn, result in them exploding into ash because of its expanding factor. In simpler words, the beams are not only capable of vaporizing anything that they strike, but they are also powerful enough to demolish high highways, buildings, vehicles, as well as bridges. Do they release toxic gas from canisters? While well, there is no denying the fact that the chief weapon of war of the tripods happens to be the directed energy weapon heat ray. But hey, let us not disregard the black smoke for that matter. As mentioned before, this toxic gas happens to be a chemical weapon that is released mainly from canisters that are launched at a distance from these bazooka-like tubes. When fired, they impact the ground and disperse this black smoke, which is dangerous enough to kill any organic creature that inhales this toxic gas or gets encompassed in it. In short, we would not advise you to breathe it. Okay, because lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place. Oh, shit! Can tripods teleport? Well, it is reported that the tripods were equipped with some form of teleportation technology. Truth be told, the aliens are never really seen physically climbing down into the buried tripod machines once they begin ambushing the planet. Instead, they are seen using some kind of teleportation that ends up disrupting the local environment, especially the weather. We are stressing on the series of mysterious lightning storms, which basically act like some form of advanced information or an electrical message. You can call it whatever you want to, and it goes goes down into the buried tripod only to get interrupted and materialized within. Of course, this is followed by the aliens being able to pilot and control the tripods. And the rest, as you all know, is history. Why do tripods have horns? Like it or not, one of the high points of Spielberg's movie in terms of the sound design has to be the fearsome tripod horn. And while it is true that it is not really explained what purpose it serves, we do have our thoughts on this. For starters, the tripods, by letting out this really loud blare which comes from the head unit, are capable of implanting fear amongst the humans, so that when the latter panic, it leads the tripods into taking advantage of them. Next, in all probability, there is a high chance that the sound is some form of communication between the tripods. You never know, maybe that's how they signal each other. Also, seen lasting for about 3 seconds, the sound can be like a data transmission thing between the tripods that update each other about their positions and where one can find humans hiding. How does their energy shielding system work? The tripods possess advanced energy shielding systems, making them impervious to all kinds of counterattacks. We're talking about everything, starting from missiles, rocket propelled projectiles, grenades, and other explosives. The energy shielding system is supreme enough to repel even nuclear weapons for that matter, and while it is true that it was not featured on screen, there is a high chance that it was tried out of pure desperation. How can tripods be defeated? There is no denying that the tripods are incredibly versatile machines. Well, they can climb on any surface they want to. They can crush anybody or anything that they think will endanger the pilots. But if we take a look at the 2005 movie, it shows that if you can somehow lay your hands on a belt of grenades and then let yourself be captured by a tripod, then all you need to do is just pull out the grenade pin and place the explosives inside the tripod's processing engine. This will have the tripod exploding and eventually destroyed like it's shown in the movie. The other thing happens to be the fact that the aliens will eventually become vulnerable to the planet's bacterial environment and succumb to it. With no one to pilot the war machines, the protective shield will be deactivated and they will become vulnerable to conventional weapons such as missile launchers. Oh, 
marvelous verdict. Well, that is all for today, and with this video, we finally come to the end of us partially viewing the catastrophe through the eyes of the center characters. So, what is it that you fancy the most about these monstrous fighting machines? Have you seen all the adaptations of H.G. Wells' original work? We would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, stay tuned with us as we promise to come back with more exciting content. Till then, goodbye and have a nice one. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.